Clap up in here, clap your hands. So glad to have you back to Power for Life. I'm Bishop Cookhouse here with my wife, Dr. Sharon. Amen. I know you're going to get blessed. Uh, and I'm going to let this show, we're going to let Dr. Sharon talk about how you're going to be blessed by the word today because I brought her into the series because I know she would have insight in how to have all authority in your life. Hello, everybody. The series, um, when my husband asked me to be a part of this, I was so delighted because of the topic. The topic authority was one that I was ready for because um, just being business, a business owner, being a pastor's wife, and having children, I understand what it means to have authority. And um, the principles that I use or that um, I took from the Word of God and applied them to the Word that I preached along with what the Word says and along with my everyday practical living this life, Amen. you're going to be blessed. Amen. I already know it, so get ready, buckle your seatbelts because it is a powerful Word. I must say so myself. And when I first preached it or, when the, or the day that I did preach it, People in here, uh, people who heard it were so blessed. The power of God came through, there was deliverance. People got saved, set free, and delivered. And I know you will enjoy the word. Yeah, so man, uh, you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, like Dr. Sharon said, you're gonna be blessed. So come on with us inside the service, and then I'll see you at the end of the word preached. God bless. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority. See, where it says power and authority, there is a difference. And it says over all devils and to cure diseases. Now, there's a reason why um, it says power and authority, because a lot of times we mix those together. And they do overlap and they do sometimes have some of the similar meanings. And those two words are similar, but Power means uh, you have a power within you that you can use and exercise and execute. It's like when you're going down the freeway here in Minneapolis, just say 94, the speed limit is 55 miles per hour. Although your car may have the power to do 120 miles per hour, but it does not have the authority to do that. So the only ones that can have authority is if you have access. And you have to still adhere to the authorities and the government of the state. Otherwise, you are in violation. So there is a difference. So when the enemy comes in, that's why he said, I've given you power. I've given you the Holy Ghost dunamis power. And then I've given you the authority to cast out demons and devils and anything that does not look like God. Luke chapter 20 y'all got it let's go to verse number 20 and here we have again people watching so it says and they watched him and sent forth spies which would feign themselves just men that they might take hold of his words that they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the governor. How many know that there's no power and authority when you are the power and the authority? When you have the power and authority to do something and you're confident in it, nothing can come against you. And so we know in life that people watch. People watch and you don't even know they're watching. Somebody's watching your life right now. Somebody's watching what you post on social media right now. They might not like it, they might not love it, but they're watching. They're watching the videos that you post. They're watching the blessing of God come on your life. They're watching everything that you do secretly, just like the Pharisees and Sadducees who was watching every move that Jesus made. Hallelujah. But there's nothing they can do about the blessing of God on your life. There's nothing they can do about when God calls you to the fivefold ministry. There's nothing they can do when you begin to elevate. Thank God for the authority and power that has been given to all saints. It's time to walk in that. Let's go to our theme scripture, which is Proverbs. Proverbs 29 and 2. This is our theme scripture. When you have it, say amen. 
All right, when the righteous are in authority, there's that word again, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. And that goes for in your family. When you're a parent, you automatically have authority over your children. So you should have happy children over for the most part. I'm not talking about if they rebellious and if they doing something, you don't have a right to chastise because you better get the right of correction. Otherwise, you're going to have a monster on your hands. But in the midst of that, with that, it's still love. It's still righteous authority. In the household, husbands, your wife should be happy. Amen. Because the Bible says that you are the head of the household. So when the righteous are in any kind of authority, no matter what that is, whether you're a husband, whether you're a, a, a parent, whether you're a school teacher, when you are righteous and an authority, it should be an atmosphere that rejoices. It doesn't mean you don't have to work. It doesn't mean it's absent of discipline, but overall spirit and attitude in the atmosphere should be that one of rejoicing. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. When we walk in our God-given authority, when we walk in a room, something should change. Atmospheres should change. Things that are going on in the spirit should change. The demonic spirit should recognize that that is a child of God who's coming in, walking in authority. I don't care if the room is depressed. I don't care if there's oppression in the room. I don't care if they just got done talking about you behind your back on the job and you step in the room everything shuts down and should shudder because the authority of God has just stepped in and something changes in the atmosphere can I get a witness and in this climate that we live in right now 2020 we have to dominate although we've crossed over into a new dispensation and we're in a new year. We have still carried some of those things from 2020 that have happened into this year. They have not gone away. As we can see every day on the news, something is happening from 2020. We're still wearing masks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I know that year will go down in history. Hallelujah. We have lived in history. They will be talking about it for years to come. Our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and those that are far off will still be talking about the year 2020. It has been one of the most tumultuous years. First with the death of the icon basketball player, then with the murder right here in our own city of George Floyd that was seen all over the world, all over the country. It has been some unprecedented times. And since the 1800s, there has never, it has always been a peaceful transfer of power. But as we witnessed in November, it was nothing short of peaceful. It was treacherous. It was hellacious all the way up until the inauguration. So since the 1800s, we have never witnessed that we are living in historical times. It's time to take up our authority. They need us. They need to know that somebody is praying. COVID-19, one of the worst epidemics that we've ever witnessed and we're still experiencing that although we crossed over into 2021. 462,000 deaths already reported in the US can get you depressed if you allow it to. 2021 also we've seen an insurrection that we have never seen before another historical time in these days and time that we live in. I believe that God is telling us to get our house in order saints. We don't have time for isms and schisms. We don't have time for silliness, pettiness. We don't have time to keep up with whatever is going on that does not benefit you that does not express that it is something that comes to bless you. Anything outside of blessing and anything outside of what God is doing in your life and you pressing towards your goals, you pressing toward the mark, it has to leave. Hallelujah. Cannot get caught up 
anything outside of that, it is a violation. You have authority over fear. You have authority over doubt, unbelief, your circumstances. You cannot, hallelujah, you cannot give your authority to anything contrary to the word, the Greek word for authority, exousia. That is the word and it means force. And how many know the scripture says the kingdom of heaven suffer violent, but the violent take it. It's time to take some authority back. It means competency. It ain't nothing like somebody who's an authority who's incompetent. You go to a restaurant, you complain about the service and you get the supervisor and the supervisor is just as incompetent as the worker. Mastery means in that word, superhuman, and we have a supernatural ability to keep our authority through the most unprecedented times. Hallelujah, it means strength, it means influence. You are supposed to be able to influence people around you. Hallelujah, the dictionary word for authority means control, influence, power, or the right to direct actions or thoughts of others. So you have a right to redirect any hater that's trying to hate on you. Anybody that's trying to say anything about you, you have the right to redirect them. You have the right to block them. You have the right not to respond to them. You have the right to keep on pushing and doing what God called you to do. Because the moment you give in, the moment you take down is the moment that the enemy can infiltrate your mind and cause your mind to come down to a lower level then you don't have no authority. Then you lost your place. Then you're not in position to hear from God, to receive from God, to go through and get to the other side. See, then the devil has won, but you don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. We got too much going on to give into anything that's carnal, anything that ain't God. We can't worry about, your, you know, your baby daddy and his new baby mama or your ex. You ain't got time for that, sister. You ain't got time for it. Listen, if they want to know how you doing, you always good. We always good over here. And if we ain't good, we good. That's all you need to know, is that we good. You ain't got time for petty arguments, brothers. You ain't got time to be running from this one, that one, and lusting and doing all kind of manner of evil. We don't have time. Did you hear what I just said about 2020? Hallelujah. Anything else, you better say is unauthorized. I don't receive it. You better put negativity and confusion under your feet and under arrest. Hallelujah. Anything else that's coming against your peace and your marriage, you better put it under arrest. It is a violation. And that's what that word means. If you remember what I said, the word authority means that you will put people under arrest and cause them to come in subjection if they're in violation. So anything outside of the word of God trying to destroy your peace and your life who comes against because people who ain't got no life and who are miserable in life they love to come against the people who are doing good love to come against the people in the household of faith in the household of faith and you cannot allow yourself to get caught up hallelujah you better get around people that's doing something stay around people that are starting businesses Stay around entrepreneurs. Stay around people that have big dreams, vision. Stay around people that are taking care of their children. Stay around people that know how to get a prayer through. Hallelujah, putting their hands on ministry. Hallelujah, you don't have time to sit around and do anything else. You don't have time to do anything other than get your house in order. If you've enjoyed this word today, then you need to get this message in its entirety. To receive the link to select your desired message or series, please send your info to wordlife at chfgm.org and type wordlife in the subject bar. Thank you so much for your continued support. 
Real hope, real life, real message. Okay, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to 15 and 13. Y'all got to say amen. It says, and he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not yours or that is not theirs. And serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. So you see, God is talking to Abraham and prophesying what's to come. How many know that God is never off track about your future? Exodus, let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter one, verse six. If you gotta say amen. All right, and it says, I'm gonna read it. It says, and Joseph died and all his brethren and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. Now there arose a new king over Egypt with new not Joseph. Somebody say they didn't know him. They didn't know Joseph. And he said unto his people, behold, the people of of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. And so I'm not gonna go through the whole thing right here because um, just because of time, but we find here that there is a new Pharaoh, a new king, which is the same thing. And the children of Israel went to Egypt because of Joseph's favor. Joseph had favor because he was the only one who could interpret the king's dreams. And God raised him up and he became powerful in that land. He was called what is called a vizier, second in command. And he was official. He was an official in ancient Egypt to serve second in command somewhere that was a foreign country a foreign land, but God raised him up. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. Y'all might know the story. So it says that this king did not know Joseph. And so Joseph, because of the authority that he has, come on, somebody say authority, will draw people to me. So his authority, and because he was righteous, the people rejoiced. And it said that the children of Israel were doing great. They were doing good. They had land. They had food. They had abundance. Because of Joseph, they left Canaan. And they wanted a better life, and it was a better life until there was a transfer of power. This was a bad, unpeaceful treacherous transfer of power well at that time it wasn't so just from one pharaoh to the next that's not where the treachery came in but it was bad and it got bad for god's people and in the midst of that they began to cry out to god this calls israel to say lord where are you are you gonna help us because they had been in such bondage, it says for 400 years. Hallelujah. And they had been going through a lot of things that they could not do on their own. So they needed a supernatural intervention. Life got extremely hard for them. They were rigorously doing work. And when you hear it, you're just like, okay, rigorous. But I'm going to explain to you what kind of work they had them doing. First of all, they made a vow. The Pharaoh made a vow that he was going to have infanticide. That means kill every newborn baby that the Israelites had. So then they had them in brick and mortar where they had them building from their hands by themselves the fortresses and the houses and even some of the pyramids was was built from them so it was labor intensive more than human labor day in and day out they hardly got any sleep God's people were suffering mightily hallelujah it was rigorous it was bad conditions they were talked to like they were animals hallelujah they hardly had anything to eat my God, and in Egypt, the average temperature in the summertime is 89.6 degree 
knees. And that didn't stop them from working. They had to work because they were trying to kill them off. They were trying to annihilate them. They had them building can canals in the Nile River. We know that the Nile River was infested with alligators. So they had them doing irrigation. It was labor, it was rigorous. They used something called a shadow, and that thing was a, it was like a pole here, and on the end of it was a pail. And they would have to get the water out one pail at a time, out of a river. Rigorous. So they was calling on God because they were suffering. The irrigation system depended on the Israelites' labor. Hallelujah. And they still use it to this day in parts of India and Egypt. They got no rest. So they cried to the Lord. In Exodus 3, 7 through 10, verse 3, the Lord appeared to Moses. Moses left because he didn't want to die. He didn't want to get executed because he murdered somebody because they were messing with God's people. At the time, he didn't know. He, didn't, he wasn't revealed on who he was. But the Lord said, surely I have heard the cries of my people. Hallelujah. How many know that God hears your cry? These people are no different from the child of God that's living today through the epidemic that we're living through. All the depression that's coming on the earth. All the death. God hears our cry. Hallelujah. Moses stood in the face of death. Stood in the face of adversity. He said, my God sent me the great I has sent me hallelujah next time you go on your job interview next time you have somebody saying something about you all you do is cry out to God and say the great I am got me when you're trying to buy a house and you need favor God got me give God some praise hallelujah thank you Jesus I ain't got that much more time. I ain't out of words, though. Thank you, Jesus. He walked in full authority with God. No fear. He had confidence. It's time to get your swagger back, saints of God. So they lost their authority. They lost their favor with God. God got rid of all of them. They all died. A whole generation died in the wilderness. God ain't playing with you. If you don't do it, God will raise your kids up to do God's will. He'll raise up the next generation. They forgot. God erased them. But the problem is, the man of God got so discouraged. He got so upset. He was so angry with these rebellious people. And then their kids started growing up and started complaining and started doing things. But they weren't as bad as the next, the, the former generation. And God told him when they were thirsty, he said, I want you to speak to the rock. And he called them rebels. He was tired of them. He was sick of them talking about him, questioning his leadership. He was there in the midst of it. He was there from the beginning of their tumultuous time. He was there when they, they were rigorously destroyed by Pharaoh. He was there to counsel them. He was their pastor. He would minister to them. He would take time to preach God's statues to them. I can understand what he was going through. Anybody in leadership you know what I'm talking about so he listened to them he listened to their disrespect over 40 years it shouldn't have took them that long should have been more like 40 days 40 years 400 years of slavery 40 years in the wilderness he got tired and God told him to get them some get them some water God wanted to show his glory God wanted to show another miracle God wanted him to be used again but he struck the rock twice it wasn't because he didn't believe God to just speak because God told him to speak and he struck it twice it wasn't that he didn't believe God he did believe God could do the miracle but what he didn't believe because God didn't deal with his action of striking the rock. God said, you didn't sanctify me. He said, you didn't give me glory. 
You let the children of Israel just see you upset and angry, and I can't have that. He wanted to strike the rock because he was mad and called them rebels. He wanted to strike the rock because he didn't feel like they deserved what God wanted for them. We don't ever get to take God's glory. We don't ever get to take credit. He said as if, he said, I, he said, you want me to get you some water. Well, Moses, it wasn't you. It's never about us. It's all about God and his glory. It's all about God and what he wants and what he has for us. Hallelujah. God allowed him to see it. God allowed him to look at it, but he didn't cross over. But I got some people of God that are ready to cross over into your next destination. You cannot get distracted. 2021 better be your year of service. Better be your year of worship. Better be your year of obedience. Better be your year of saying, yes, Lord, I'm going to a new level. Give them some praise. And I'm so glad you had a chance to hear her. I know the woman of God was truly dynamic. Amen. I always enjoy when she brings the word. Uh, she is my favorite, one of my favorite preachers. And I mean preacher preachers. And so I know you got blessed. Please remember, if you want to be a part of our ministry here on Power for Life, please sow into the ministry. Amen. Look us up on Give Lafay. Amen. Cookhouse, Full Gospel Ministries. Amen. Right on your phone or on anywhere your internet devices, you can find us there. So into our ministry to help us continue to keep bringing the word to you on a consistent basis. It is our desire to get something to you, not take something from you. So email us if you want to partner with us and we can get that information out to you ASAP. But this is such a blessing to be here with you on this broadcast. We'll see you the same time next week. We'll be back with another life-changing word. We'll be changing directions, and we'll be talking about willpower. And I promise you, it's going to change your life in a most impactful way and empower you to walk out the will of God for your life. So this is Bishop Cookhouse and my wife, Dr. Sharon. And we're going to just sign off and say God bless you. Amen. And you'll be hearing from this wonderful woman of God more real soon. And always remember, take your dominion.